What is going on, everybody? Uh oh. All right. Can everybody hear me? Let's see here in the chat. Let me give some uh, shout outs here. Uh, what's going on, Paranormal Investigation? Emma Jane, how's it going? What's up to you there, Joanne? KY Woman, Susan Welch, what's going on? How are you, Vicky? Meme? Oh, Mimi of four. Got it. Uh, Beverly, what's going on there? Nikki, hey, Emma Jane. Shout out to you, a member for 25 months. Samantha, how are you doing? Amy, Patrick, hope all is well to everybody joining in here. Susan, Dustin, giving y'all some shout outs here before we get started. Uh, Wilson, uh, looks like Charlene, Kaylee, Raptors Adventures, Trippy. What's going on, everybody? Dustin, uh, real quick, if you all lose me or this live stream ends abruptly, don't freak out. As you can see, I am, um, so this is a this is a crazy day. So it's raining outside right now. Not sure if y'all can hear like the raindrops on top of the truck. I'm in the back seat of my truck and I'm doing this live stream for you all. And I am at one of my investment properties right now. And it, it's, we've been, we've been having like quite the time with this one property. I wanted to go to the farm tonight, but I don't think that's really in the cards being that I'm so far away. So long story short, I'm here. I promised you all a video. I did not deliver. And I'm very, very, very sorry about that. Uh, but we're going to cover some juicy stuff in this live stream. And not to mention, we're going to uh, got to talk about some things because tomorrow, like, so basically the video I was supposed to upload today was uh, got a copyright uh, strike on it. Not really a strike, but it's a strike. And basically makes it to where I cannot upload that video without being penalized. So I really do apologize. Does it suck? Yeah, but this video is so, so, so worth the wait. And um, what's going on, Heidi? He says, I've come a long way since 90,000 subscribers. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. That means a lot. Carla Small, thank you very much for the super chat there. Shout out to you there, Carla. Uh, Sherry Ann, oh, Carla Small with another super chat. What's up? What's up? So, um, all right, so we got to talk a little bit. Tomorrow's video, what's going on? who is trespassing, all of this good stuff. So number one, let's talk about, we, uh, we basically call it two people trespassing. And uh, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I kind of teased it on the live stream the other night on the vlog channel, but we call it two people trespassing and the state police got very, 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 very involved. And it was just one thing after another, after another. Well. I'm going to give you all a little bit of a context here. So I was uh, going into the farm by myself. This is like a week later after we caught the trespassers. And um, no, for somebody who just said, oh, was it teenagers? They were not teenagers. They were full grown men for what that's worth. So, um, hey there, uh, Lion Court says, same here in Sydney, Australia, raining and no need for apologies. Stay safe. Thank you so much for the super chat there, by the way. And uh, Andrea, thank you very much for becoming a member here on the channel. Um, Adonica says, are you going to make hoodies? Yes, we are. Carla Small coming back with a super chat donation. So here's what I need you all to do. I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go probably, I might try to go live again on Friday. Now, here's where I'm going with this. If I go live on Friday, I will probably have a website for you all to go to at that point where you can start booking investigations at the farm or my auction house, places along those lines. So we're there's so much work to get done in such a short amount of time. But uh, Aaron, thank you for becoming a haunted uh, associate member there. Big shout out to you. So a lot of y'all are loving the farm videos and that's kind of where I'm going is um, in the video, in tomorrow's video that you're going to see. Oh, this was nuts. So I was in the house by myself. Now you all know I have cameras all throughout the house. There's this one camera that particularly sits in the living room that sits straight up like this and it was on a desk and it fell over and landed like 
face down on this glass platform and like I could see through the glass platform that obviously the camera got knocked over. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, what happened to the camera? So I jump in my truck, start heading to the farm. And once I get to the farm there, I mean, it's just me, Kayla and Chris were, that's Chris's girlfriend, Chris and his girlfriend, I should say, they were actually uh, out for vacation and Chelsea, she, she stayed back at the house and i'll tell you right now i got here to the property during daylight daytime like it was like just it was normal i was feeling good and i go inside the house and next thing i know just felt weird just felt so weird so off i, I just i was like man there's just something's not right so i walk into the living room and the camera is back up and i look at my phone and i'm like what in the hell so for all intents and purposes there was about a time window of about four minutes from the time that I pulled into the farm to the time I got out of the truck to the time that I got to the camera. And at some point, you can see the camera go right back up like this. We're not on camera, but like it took, um, that one's just a picture camera. So it takes picture in time. So if there's movement in front of it, it will then take a picture. So the camera is now facing back up when I walk into the house. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, this is weird. Maybe, maybe I, the, the pictures that came through, maybe it just wasn't registering properly. I don't know. So now fast forward to a couple hours later into the night. Now things get really weird. Uh, Bailey. Yes, Chris does. And, um, anyway, so later on into the night, I, I got thinking to myself, I'm like, um, that was a little weird. And next thing I know, the notification goes off on my camera. Same one again. Now the camera is like, it's, it's like on wood. So now I'm like, okay, is this on the ground? So I drive all the way back to the farm. I get out of my truck. I go inside. I'm looking around and sure enough, the camera is still facing up. It's not on the floor. It's not on the table. So now I'm really confused about that time. There was a very loud noise from the basement. And as you all know, the basement is where the portal is located on the property. So obviously me being me start doing an investigation and I'm not going to spoil the rest, but I was by myself and y'all are going to have to watch tomorrow to understand like just some of the weirdest things happen at this farm and it just it's becoming all more prevalent of just like wow this is actually like some weird crazy stuff going on um carla thank you for the super chat there and emma jane thank you for the super chat emma says thank you for your hard work and dedication we really appreciate you well emma i appreciate you as well uh lisa lutz thank you for the super chat much love to you there so uh liz says i've been digging the farm videos and fear follows face and series so Next up on the Fear Follows Facing series is us going to the Conjuring House. And after that, I can't really tell you where we went and are going next and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, another thing. Yeah, somebody said uh, by yourself. And did I have my GUN with me? I sure did. I sure did. So Dylan. Okay, so you all saw Dylan's video last night. I don't know if any. Comment below if you saw Dylan's video last night. That's gonna make a difference in, in whether or not like I'm ruining something for you or not. Um, yeah, so a lot of people are saying that uh, they saw Dylan's video last night. So if you haven't already, go follow Dylan and check out his video. I, I'm just, I'm not even gonna spoil anything for you. Dylan literally left and left his camera, everything inside the house literally everything inside the house gone absolutely gone did not care about his paranormal gear his cameras none of it he was just like nope not doing it uh it's just he was like it's just not worth it and i i understand but uh there's some stuff that's been going on inside of that house and i want you all to realize that you all are going to do or be able to come and visit and be able to investigate the house for yourself at your own risk, by the way. But just the fact that he left his camera behind, I was like, 
dang. Like, left all of his stuff behind. And you know Dylan has been getting braver and braver and braver. And now this happens, and it was just really weird. So, I don't know. What's going on, Amanda? Shout out to you, Amanda Nash. Sherry Ann Coleman says, I just watched it today. So, uh, yeah. Next up on the, the video list, you're going to see the video from... Uh, or that was supposed to drop today. You'll see it tomorrow. And then sometime this weekend, I'm going to drop another video where... Dylan and I were in the house and when we were inside that, it was just him and I because Chris was still on vacation with his girlfriend at that point. We go inside the house and we all we did was just set one rim pod up. So when we set the rim pod up, we, you know, it, it's, it's like a crapshoot with a rim pod, okay? Sometimes you're going to get activity from it and sometimes spirits don't even want to touch it. Well, this was not the case with this particular rim pod. As you all know, I've had REM pods go off here and there in videos, but I've never, and I mean never, have I had a REM pod go off the way that I did with Dylan the other night. It was so bizarre. Some of the, the, the things that we, some of the things that we were getting answered through the spirit box and the Estes method and all of that. I, you all know me. If you watch a video on my channel, I love the Estes method. Because this here, it's one of the most foolproof ways. Like, it's it can't be... It, I don't even know how to explain it. It can't really be negotiated. Think about it. Somebody's got headphones on. Other people are asking questions. And that's that. So, I think another thing, after you see the video with me and Dylan... There is another video where it was me, Dylan, and Chris. And that video was filmed last week. And we had one of the craziest demonic nights I personally ever think that has gone on. This was a video that I don't know how to explain it other than it like rocked the socks of everybody. We were so weirded out on so many levels. A lot of stuff that happened won't even make sense. And hang on, uh, Lisa Jarvis, thank you there for the super chat. Much love to you. I'm going to answer a question really quick. Um, and Donica says, got a question for you. How come you and Chris are always filming together and Dylan always filming by himself? That's not necessarily the case all of the time, but it always seems like uh, you know, Chris and I are just like a little bit more scared than Dylan. And Dylan actually wants to be alone when he's, when he gets the chance. Dylan would rather walk through the tunnels of Indiana State Sanatorium alone instead of film with us sometimes. It's just, you know, the way it is. But so that's that. Moving on to our next subject that we're going to talk about here. Uh, the video with me, Dylan and Chris. A lot of demonic things were coming through and we were almost we felt like we were communicating with something good at first and then it turned like pure evil and all this crazy stuff was happening around us and you know when the crazy stuff excuse me when the crazy stuff was happening all around us we were all looking at each other like uh do we stay do we go uh, like what do we do and i think you all are really gonna love that video as well but Sometimes I think we bit off more than we can chew. Another, another update on the property, and one of the, you know, one of the biggest concerns I guess that people had, or one of the questions, was when are we doing the ground penetrating radar? That there is a very tricky subject. It's a fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment, and the problem is, renting a fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment comes with a little bit more. Um, a little bit more responsibility. You have to have actually like, I have to get an insurance policy on this unit for us to even bring it to the property. And it's getting shipped in from Arizona. So it sucks. Yeah. But like, it's like finding, um, finding the, uh, finding the proper insurance company to cover us using that piece of equipment is really, really tough. So I was at the farm yesterday and I'm looking around at some of the hot spots that were marked. 
and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I, I really need to get this ground penetrating radar here faster than faster than fast because I really want to know, is there something in the ground? It doesn't mean that there's actual like person from way back when. This could be uh, an item or artifacts of some sort too. So being right along the river, like the whole entire farm property is actually on a river. It just makes it to where the possibilities are endless. All the settlers that came up through the waterways and the rivers and the creeks and the bay and all that could be something there. It really could. So um, somebody said they don't have an experienced person to operate that. So in order for us to have an operator, an operator to run that machine, we got quoted just today $5,000 for eight hours plus the equipment rental. So if you want an expert to come in here at $5,000 every eight hours, that's, I personally cannot justify spending $5,000 for eight hours of someone's time right yet. It just doesn't, it just doesn't seem, I don't need to know that bad if there's something in the ground. I can start digging around myself, which probably isn't the right thing to do, but, uh, I did, again, I just don't want to spend the $5,000 right now. Uh, I think there's some better uh, better money spent right now, like getting a roof on this house, things of that nature. Uh, you know, a roof for the house just to conserve the house is ten grand right there. Boom, right off the bat. And that's at a, uh, hey, I'm your friend discount from my buddy who owns a big roofing company. Uh, let me give a shout out here to Michelle Myers. CJ, you and the guys should come to Washington State and go to the Northern State Sanatorium. Hey, all right, I'll put that on our list there. Thank you very much. And Michelle, I realize that this is your very first Super Chat, and I really appreciate that. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Paranormal Investigation says, can you dig yourself? So yes, we can. So here's the thing. Think about this. The ground penetrating radar that we're renting has a screen about, eh, about three or four times this size. And what you're going to see when you're pushing this ground penetrating radar over the ground, you're going to see certain anomalies. Now, if it were someone in the ground from a certain time period, usually they were buried from east to west. If it's just some artifact in the ground or a structure that was here many moons ago, that is also going to reflect a different anomaly. So we're actually, uh, unfortunately, going through training right now and mainly Chris is going through training in order to work this machine and to understand what he's reading. So I would love to get someone that's experienced here, but for $5,000 for eight hours, just isn't really cutting it. So that's why uh, we said, all right, we're going to do it ourselves. We'll, we'll just learn. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So give a shout out to Ferris uh, Charmaine. Gary, how's it going there? Mel, Beverly, what's going on? What's up, Walter? Uh, Heidi, uh, what about a bloodhound or cadaver dog? So the thing is when you get like a bloodhound or a cadaver dog in here, I've never really thought about it except for when I first bought the property. And the ground penetrating radar is a little bit more accurate to knowing what's under the ground. And, you know, if it's something from hundreds of years ago, then yeah, it's even harder at that point. So, but I, I love, I love where you're going with that though. Good, good point. Another thing about the ground penetrating radar that we're running this system. So think about this as the screen, but just like about four times this size. When we're scanning over the radar is penetrating down in a downward motion this way and that way. So it's almost making a V like this. And what we're recording is we're scanning six feet to the right and six feet to the left. So, or technically it's six feet. So it's three feet to the left, three feet to the right, six foot. And, you know, we're, we're working on being trained in order to use this. But usually you're going to see something between four in, or from three to four feet in the ground if there is something. Now, over time, you're going to have, think about this, when the leaves fall, right? In the woods, the leaves will slowly deteriorate over time. So we have to penetrate through those leaves. And that's one of the biggest concerns is like tree roots. 
we could say, oh my gosh, this looks like something and it's actually a tree root. That's where proper training comes into play. Now, when we're reading this screen, when we're gonna be pushing over like this, it's casting down in that V formation like this, what we're looking for is anomalies almost in a boomerang shape. And if it's in a certain length, then we'll know what that is. If it's not in a certain length, we'll also know, hey, that could be an artifact of some sort. And I'm really proud to say this, that I'm trying to utilize people who are close to us. Chris's dad is a professional metal detector and he's going to bring his metal detector out here. And if it is like a small anomaly, we're gonna mark it. And then after we mark that anomaly, he is gonna go there, scan it with his, um, I, I guess you would call that a uh, metal detector. It's like a professional grade metal detector. He'll go over it, he'll scan it, he'll we'll all dig for it. So there's a lot of cool stuff that he's gonna be able to do with us. He's gonna come spend a weekend here with um, Chris, me and Dylan. And hopefully by that time, Sonny will be back in the videos, maybe. And uh, it's really cool. And I'm, I'm happy to have Chris's dad do it because he is really, really good at what he does. And, you know, it's just possibilities. Possibilities are endless of what you can find. Um, Liz, is everything so exciting that's coming up? Yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool. And I, I really hope that you all can stay on board with what we're doing and get behind what we're doing merch for the farm and the name is actually going to be released i mean very soon so be paying close attention to that we're probably gonna host a live stream about that or just add it in one of the videos so with that being said we're gonna have hoodies because we're getting ready for the fall and with that we are going to be naming we're gonna pick uh rooms in the house and if you purchase merch when they do drop we have some really, really special things that we're gonna do for everybody. So you're literally gonna be a part of the farm. And uh, we have some other cool stuff that we're gonna end up doing too that I think you all are really gonna love. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna take some questions now about the ground penetrating radar. Uh, television says a guy helped find the graves at the Conjuring house. Um, he worked with exploring with Josh. Could somebody hook me up with that guy's information by chance? Uh, the guy that had the ground penetrating radar. If that's cool. So hang on one second. I'm going to. All right, here we go. So if you do have that, their information, if you don't mind, forward that to me on Instagram or email me. Only if you have his actual information. Uh, it's business at cjfason.com. Please and thank you. And looks like somebody had some eye surgery the other day. Hope everything's going well. Hey, Leslie said that she just went to Indiana State Sanatorium in Billy Creek. I'd love to know how that went for you, actually, because that's that's pretty cool. Um, somebody says, have you ever gone magnet fishing at the bridge? You could collaborate with another YouTuber that has the equipment to see what's at the bottom of the creek. So actually, uh, Chris and I are planning on scanning those waters around the creek here really soon. Angelique says, too bad you couldn't rig up a uh, fish finder sonar would be a heck of a lot cheaper i know um fish finding sonar would be a lot cheaper just like we have on our boat but unfortunately it doesn't really work on the ground oh one other thing i want to tell you about uh the ground penetrating radar from what we have learned so far uh referring back to that screen if we were to find an anomaly this one ground penetrating radar system that we are going to use we can actually record latitude and longitude to like the exact point. So we'll circle obviously with like maybe a spray paint or a marker of some sort, but we'll also be able to go back in that system and see exactly where that's at. It won't show pictures of objects in real time. It just shows anomalies in the soil and dirt. So when it's shooting down in this type of formation, it's like casting a shadow into the ground technically. And if you think about, I don't know if y'all know much about radar, but or radar and sonar, but it will send a signal into the ground. And if something is blocking that signal, it will shoot that signal back up, signifying that there's something right here at this particular spot. So yeah, it's uh, pretty darn cool. I'm excited for the future of not only the channel here, but the farm, the videos, the face and fear of uh, the fear follows face and series, all of that. 
And we hope to see everyone be able to either own a piece of merch, own a piece of the farm, or quite possibly maybe uh, you come and visit the farm uh, when we when we put the bookings up. That's going to be a really big thing. My auction facility, that one there is going to be the first available one for you to book to go and explore and investigate. As you know, the uh, spirit of Brink is there. So we're going to be uh, releasing a website again, probably around Friday when I go live and just telling you all what that website is, introducing you to what's going on. And yeah, it's going to be wild. Somebody said, why not a live cam at the farm? That's actually not a bad idea. So Lisa says, what happens if you find a body? Well, that's a really good question, Lisa. And I, I particularly, hang on one second. Particularly what would go on at that point would be, um, obviously we hope it's nothing from present time. We don't want that. Um, truthfully, I, I would, if it's, uh, a unmarked grave from hundreds of years ago, I would at least like to pay respect to that grave and put a gravestone there and mark it. There are proper people and proper ways to go about it. And we are fully prepared to do that if we did find that. So I would rather just find cool stuff in the ground, truthfully. But the the rumors that somewhere around here, back when the plague hit, that there's a mass grave or something, and it's along the river, and we went and saw this historian that's local, and he's telling me, well, he has no idea who we were when we walked in, but he was telling me, he's like, yeah, there's like this mass grave, it's in this area, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what in the world? And then we learned that there's a National Geographic marker somewhere on the property. And it's from over hundreds of years ago. And then the problem is now it's probably overgrown or something along those lines, because obviously that would be buku dollars that this property would be worth if we could find that. So it might have to be my retirement one day. I don't know, I'm just kidding, but let's see here. So uh, Joanne says you would think what the river would have washed or raised and washed away. So a lot of times, think about this, Joanne, a lot of times way back in the day, if they were to uh, you know, bury a family member or something, they would do it along the waterways, but they would also find an elevated piece of land in which I have right here. So that's not like right here, but you, you get what I'm saying. So that's one thing to think about. So there could be stuff, you know what I mean? Somebody could have buried treasure here years and years ago. So I don't know. Um, happy birthday, Canning. So uh, John said Chris's dad may be able to find that marker. And yes, I do agree with that, John. And hopefully he can. I think it would be really cool. Uh, let's see here. All right. Who is Kiwi and why are y'all telling Kiwi to stop? Am I missing something in the chat? Do we have mods in the chat today? Matt White, what's going on? Thank you for the super chat there. Another super chat donation shout out going to Carrie. Hey, it's Carrie's first time ever doing a super chat. So, hey, shout out to you there. Thank you so, so much. Um, Everybody, I appreciate you tuning into this. I really do. I have some work that I have to do on this one investment property that I'm at right now. So, yeah, I'm sorry. see here um okay lisa let me let me do this before i get off lisa says uh what are you hoping to find so we're hoping to find old relics and artifacts that's the main thing i would like to find and i think it'd be really cool to preserve that stuff put it in the house as you know paying homage to it and the property and all of that good stuff so that's what i would really like to find and uh Rebecca, I think for the super chat, another super chat donation going to Matt White. What's up? Thank you again. We appreciate that, my man. Uh, um, let's see here. Who else we got here? <laughs> Brian said, hoping to find Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> what? Oh man, that'd be weird. So everybody, I love y'all. I'm going to go ahead and log off of here. I do appreciate you. And Cannot thank you enough for the support. It's been by far one of the coolest journeys I've been on personally. 
by uh by buying this farm and being able to maybe hopefully allow you all to come to it one day. So don't forget, live stream on Friday, uh, or around Friday, more than likely on Friday, and then this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, there's gonna be another video. So tomorrow's video, Friday's live stream, Saturday or Sunday video again. So video, live stream, video, let's do it. I love y'all so much, Face and Nation. Thank y'all for supporting me. This shit means the world. It literally means the world, and I cannot thank you enough for that. We'll see you all in the video tomorrow. I need you all in the comment section. Blowing it up. Let's go. See ya.